Hi, I'm Jeff Yager. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. This video is going to cover looking at computational uh, calculations of enthalpy, specifically um, looking at something that was inter that's introduced in a lot of physical chemistry texts. This one specifically was introduced in uh, Physical Chemistry for the Life Sciences, Sciences second edition, uh, chapter one. And what it does is, is explain that computational chemistry, ab initio chemistry or electronic structure calculation, is now getting very common and ubiquitous to use for looking at the energies of small molecules. Specifically, the energy we're going to look at, since we often do these things at constant pressure, and therefore we want to equate the energy to not any change in work, but just its change in heat, how much uh, heat would be involved, then we often look at this as uh, in constant pressure processes as enthalpy terms. Um, and so looking at how these energies through enthalpies uh, of different molecules change, you know, gives us a sense for changes in bonding, changes in structure, and how much energy would be required um, to change these structures, etc. And so whether it's looking at real chemical reactions, like for example combustion where we're actually breaking and reforming bonds and reacting multiple substances together, or simpler things like for example just looking at the equatorial to axial change of methyl cyclohexane and asking how much energy does it take for this methyl to go from an equatorial plane up to the axial plane how much energy difference is there between these two conformations of this molecule to looking at something like glycine, which can be a sweater ion, and asking, you know, when it's in its sweater ionic state as an NH3 plus and a C double bond O minus versus its um, state where there's no charge, which is NH2 and the acid has its proton on it. Uh, you know, asking what the energy differences are between this, whether you want to do it in a vacuum or gas state, single molecule, or whether you want to put it in some type of solvent, for example, explicitly in water, and ask what the energy differences are between some of these. There's just a lot of fundamental chemistry and biochemistry questions where you can gain a lot of insight through looking at this through the lens of some computational chemistry, through simulations on a computer. Now, um, there's a lot of different chemical packages or, or package software packages that allow computational chemistry at a lot of different levels of theory. Ab initio, meaning kind of from first principles or quantum mechanical, um, to molecular dynamics where they'll often use force fields, to Monte Carlo uh, type methods. Uh, etc. And, and this video isn't really going to go into this except to say that often when we're introducing this we're looking at these electronic structure calculations from kind of low level ab initio or semi-empirical to say maybe um, a Hartree-Fock type method etc. And one of the places I find to uh, get some introduction to this is a freely available um, website where you can do AM1 level semi-empirical calculation on small molecules. In fact, I've done it here uh, to calculate the formation enthalpies of these two forms of methylcyclohexane. And what I want to do, and you could use a lot of other different packages. There are freeware packages, NWChem, Orca. Uh, there's all sorts of visualization packages as well. Um, there's paid packages, Gaussian, uh, Spartan, um, just to name a couple. So this is a good starting point for looking at, um, you know, ab initio structure calculations and being able to relate it directly to thermodynamics, in this case, enthalpies. Okay, so let's just look at this one specifically um, so that you could see how to get started. And it's really just going to this website um, and so what I've done is this is what you will see when you go to this website. 
um, so that you can build this. You can build it atom by atom, or you can do what I did, which is start by drawing out benzene. Then I went to the single bond here, and I replaced the three double bonds in benzene that make it aromatic with single bonds. JS mol will directly then add the corresponding hydrogens to it. Then I went to this carbon and replaced one of the hydrogens with carbon. And so now I have made, um, you know, methyl cyclohexane. Uh, so I've drawn it myself. I didn't go to the molecular list. I made a new molecule myself. And then you can further optimize, which uses kind of a force field to let this thing kind of optimize a little. I have in here, and you can almost tell because it's still in this planar structure um, that is benzene because it's aromatic, which it wouldn't have once you've relieved those double bonds. You will see this take some type of um, chair you know, type conformation of the cyclohexane. But I can immediately then calculate its properties and it will tell me that it's methyl cyclohexane and you'll see that it will now optimize it in this chair conformation and it's put um, the methyl in one of its minimum states, its, uh, its axial state in this case, and it's just finding a local minimum. So it could find either the local minimum in the axial or the equatorial um, plane. Both of them are local minimum. Minimum. In a sense, what we're going to find out through this is which one is the global minima. So then, after I've done the molecule, I can click on the thermodynamics here, and it'll take a few seconds, and it'll calculate under standard conditions, standard pressure and temperature, so constant pressure conditions, which is why it gives things in the heat of formation, will be the enthalpy. Um, uh, of the system, and now I can get that uh, standard state, you know, heat of formation um, here. And that's how I got the one value for the uh, axial. I can do the same for the equatorial. And what I've done here is I, I drew the molecule. I then, it will put things in equatorial versus each of these hydrogens in equatorial or axial, and then I added the methyl to uh, the equatorial plane since I already had the axial one, then recalculated, and now you'll see there's a slight difference. It went from minus 149 to minus 154, this one being of lower energy, so a little more stable. So everything's kind of in line with what I'm expecting, and now I could take the difference between those to get the difference between the axial and the equatorial of this. So that's where I got these two values, is calculating them directly from mallcalc.org. You could do this at a higher, uh, with mallcalc, you could, this is using um, this freak uh, where website to do things at a higher level of theory, to get a little more accurate and to be able to do things that say with solvents, et cetera, you would need to then load a, an ab initio or a electronic structure calculation onto your own computer. Um, like I said, freeware ones like, like Orca or like uh, NW Chem uh, um, Games uh, is another one spelled with two S's. Um, or, you know, ones, for example, at Arizona State, we have licenses for Gaussian. Um, there's, you know, things like Spartan. These are often paid programs, but have nice graphical interfaces associated with them. I strongly encourage using computational resources when learning some of the fundamental thermodynamics in both chemistry and in biochemical systems, because I think it can provide a level of molecular insight and fundamental understanding that really will uh, benefit you in, in understanding conceptually this topic, as well as practically uh, being able to help you um, as well. So I hope this little uh, vignette was useful and that uh, this motivates you to kind of look into uh, some computational methods as, um, as learning tools to understanding uh, biochemical and chemical thermodynamics. Thank you.